Let me tell you a little bit about the floats that we're using. This is more of a classic ball type float and it has a pretty good flotation. So what I'm going to do is just drop it in the water and I'm going to show it close to you here that it's like a classic. See the way it's sitting up? So it's uh, balanced so that the water line is right at the equator of the float. So this is a good float. It casts really well and it's somewhat sensitive. It's a pretty good float. Now I'm going to show you this other one that I've got rigged up on this rod. It's a little bit different. It doesn't have a mast. Okay, so the other one actually I'm going to pick it up to show you here. See the one has a mast. That's what that tip is that you see. This one doesn't have a tip sticking out. No mast. And because of that it's not as stable. So watch what happens when I put it in the water. I'm going to let it go down and I'm, I've got it weighted the same way. Okay, it's still buoyant, it's still at the equator, but it's much more sensitive. See how it doesn't sit upright? And if I just move my line even, you can see that it moves with the slightest bit of resistance. So this float that I have on there is much more sensitive. So they're just two different, different designs. A float with the mast will be more stable in the water. You can usually add a little bit more weight to it. And it takes a little bit more power for a fish to pull it under. When you get a float like this that doesn't have a mast, it's usually much more sensitive and anything that touches gets registered.